Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of A Beautiful Life. I am your host, Amanda Howard, here again. Um, so we're rounding out the series of postpartum care and just preparing for baby in general with a little bit of caring tips for your baby. Um, because the newborn phase can be a little overwhelming, especially if you are a new parent and you have never done this before. Um, but even if you aren't a new parent and this is something that you're dealing with for the first time, hopefully these tips will help you. This is going to be a very short episode, but hopefully they'll be helpful, um, a helpful episode for you guys. So this will be the last installment of pre and postnatal topics for a while as we will be moving on next week into very, very serious topics. We're going from something really, really fun and exciting, you know, preparing for a baby, preparing for a newborn into more mental health issues as well as eating disorders and body image issues. And we're going to be talking a lot about kids and teen health. Um, this is a very important, these are very important topics because they're multiple topics. As I feel that childhood health, especially mental health for children, is vastly overlooked by um, this particular field, the health and wellness field. And even though I don't necessarily work with kids, um, it still needs to be discussed and it still needs to be addressed. And so that's what we're going to be moving on to next week. But as for today, we're going to continue with this postpartum topic, and we're going to look at some common issues that new parents deal with during the postpartum newborn phase. We're going to begin with colic. We're going to talk about colic gas, cradle cap, and diaper rash. These are four of the most common issues that we deal with with newborn babies. So starting with colic, um, colic is actually a condition where a healthy baby frequently and intensely cries for long periods of time. Um, crying can be especially bad at night, which is really hard for new parents who are trying to get sleep and are already not getting enough sleep. Symptoms you can look out for are legs pulled up to the stomach, um, flushed face, and clenched hands. It's usually because of pain or gas. It typically is caused by digestive discomfort or cramping, constipation, or lactose intolerance. These are really common um, triggers for colic. However, like we've talked about in previous episodes, if the mother has taken care of her gut health beforehand, colic is very rare to find because the baby will inherit good gut flora if the mom has good gut flora. A warm water bottle on the baby's stomach can help break up the gas bubbles, help break up any kind of um, blockage that's happening in the, the um, intestinal area. But you can also do lower body manipulation that can help promote the removal of the gas. And this can be done through gentle, specific movements. I think there are so many people on Instagram. I've saved a couple of one of them. Uh, I've saved a couple of videos. I think I'm going to go ahead and share them in stories this week. So if you want to check them out, I will save them in the pregnancy highlight on my Instagram page. But these specific manipulative movements help to break up gas bubbles, but they also help to keep the intestinal um, process moving, uh, which is really important if your baby is, is, sorry, I'm missing my words, is prone, there is a word, prone to constipation, especially if they have lactose intolerance. So I will post that for you guys. You can check it out. But you can find these specific movements on YouTube, on Instagram. Just do a search. Um, It's like, uh, it's, I would say just search helping remove gas bubbles from newborns. And they'll give you these special movements that you can do that are very gentle and they won't hurt the baby. So anyway, uh, that and swaddling. Swaddling will help as well because it'll keep the baby feeling very cozy and comforted. Um, So yeah, anyway, I'm going to recommend some herbals throughout this episode. And I want you guys to first remember, I feel like I always have to say this, I sometimes forget, but please remember to consult a professional before taking anything. Um, I'm not telling you to take these things. I'm not telling you to give these to your baby. I'm just saying that they have been proven to work in the past. Um, And they are herbals, so they are safer. However, please consult a professional before dosing anything, dosing, you know, anything. But for colic, raspberry leaf tincture has been shown to show improvement. Um, Gas is very similar to colic. You're going to treat it very similarly 
pain or excessive crying could be signs of indigestion, lack of appetite. You'll have weight loss, disruption of bowel movements. All of this can be linked to gas problems. So again, you can do the gentle massage or movements to remove the gas. That's going to really help a lot. You can also try a tincture of catnip and fennel, and that can help in this particular case. Fennel is going to help relax the digestive system. Um, cradle cap is also very common. It's more of a fungal issue. It is dermatological. It causes oily or scaly flaky patches on the baby's scalp. One of the easiest ways to tackle this issue is by eating, adding equal parts tea tree oil and olive oil and applying it on the scalp. And the tea tree oil will kill off any fungus or bacteria that's causing this, um, this cradle cap problem. Tea tree oil can also be used for diaper rash. Um, it is a little bit harsher, so you've got to be really gentle with it. Or you can use Taifu oil, which I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but it's T-E-I-F-U. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, you can delight, dilute either one of these oils. You can use the Taifu oil or the, the tea tree oil. Dilute it in equal parts. You can do vitamin A oil, um, E, or olive oil. You can use jojoba oil if you want to or aloe vera gel, and you can apply that directly to the rash. So anyway, this is a really short episode. This is probably one of the shorter episodes that I've ever recorded, but I wanted to just give you some tips on how to deal with these four problems because they are so common and because this whole series is meant for new parents who are just figuring out how to go through this process of being pregnant and recovering postpartum. Um, I don't have a specific episode for diastasis recti. However, I am going to be uploading a YouTube video all about diastasis and how to um, work around it and how to get your body back in shape after pregnancy postpartum. So if you are interested in learning about diastasis at all, that'll be up this Saturday and you can check that out on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description of this episode for you. So anyway, I hope this is helpful for you guys. I hope that you found these four things helpful. Um, if there are any other issues that you have questions about that regarding newborns or postpartum care, please feel free to reach out. I would love to help you out as much as I can um, because I am more of a postpartum prenatal fitness specialist and health specialist. I do have a lot of experience working with people who are going through this. So feel free to reach out. I'd love to talk to you about this, but this is also important, you know, having these episodes for you. It's also important because there are, is an increasing number of people who want to avoid the over-the-counter products that are, that can cause gut damage and, you know, like the regular diaper rash creams, they're, they're really dangerous to be putting on your baby. And they can cause a lot of a lot of other health issues that can be hidden for years and years, or they can make the situation all outright worse. So there's with that increasing number of people who want to go more natural with their approach to postpartum care and newborn care. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to put these podcast episodes out there for you guys to give you some options on knowing how to approach the situation from a more natural perspective. But again, all of these things can be prevented. The cradle cap and the gas in particular, the digestive issues, can be prevented by preparing your body before getting pregnant, supporting the organ systems and supporting the gut in particular. The gut is what is going to influence how healthy your baby is in the womb and outside of it. Because if you have unhealthy or inadequate gut flora, your baby most likely will inherit that as well. And yes, you can build it back up, but it's going to be a little bit harder. So there's always a preventative aspect to everything. And that's what I really love sharing with you guys. So anyway, I hope you found this in this episode interesting. If you missed any of the other episodes that we talked about prenatal care and postpartum care, feel free to go back and backtrack and check them out. Um, I will be doing a recap at the end of this week of all of the episodes in this series on my Instagram page. So if you follow me, you'll see them up in the stories. I'll just be doing a complete recap in my stories. And because we're going to be changing and switching gears into a new subject pretty soon here, if you missed any of these topics on Instagram in particular, I am saving them in my pregnancy highlight. So I've shared a lot of things in my stories that I did not share in posts. I did share some of it in podcast episodes. 
excuse me, but there is still stuff that I missed here on the podcast. So if you have any questions or if there is something that you missed that you would like to go back and look at, they're all saved in my pregnancy highlight over on my Instagram page. Everything is in the description of this episode, so feel free to check it out and click all the links you want. Um, And I'll see you in my YouTube video on Saturday. Next week, I'm very excited. We'll be diving into some new subject matter. So until then, have a beautiful day, guys, and thanks for listening.